JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Man fatally shot in alleged police shootout in St. Catherine. An investigation has been launched into the death of a man who was killed during an alleged shootout with the police near Lakesville in St. Catherine last night. It is reported that, at about 7.15 p.m., police personnel were on patrol along Port Anderson Road when upon reaching in the vicinity of a bar, the cops observed a group of men. A man reportedly brandished a handgun and started firing at the police. The police returned the fire. When the shooting subsided, the unidentified man was found with gunshot injuries. According to the police, an AG 9mm pistol was retrieved from him. It was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where it was pronounced dead. The Independent Commission of Investigations has launched an investigation into the incident. Two teenagers shot dead, another wounded in Westmoreland. Two teenagers were fatally shot at Top Lincoln in Grangeville, Westmoreland, as they sought shelter from the rain on Wednesday afternoon. The deceased have been identified as 18-year-old Ramish O'Connor and 15-year-old J. Lee J. Tomlinson, both of Westmoreland addresses. Another 18-year-old is in critical condition in hospital. According to reports, sometime after 3 p.m., the teens were among four people traveling on two motorcycles from Hanover to Westmoreland when they stopped at a nightclub during heavy rain. It is understood that they were pounced upon by a man who opened fire on them. The police were alerted. The victims were taken to hospital where Ramesh and Jolly J were pronounced dead. The third victim was admitted. A female escaped unharmed. No motive has been established for the killings. Woman dies after being hit by a taxi in Portmore. A tragic accident early this morning claimed the life of a female pedestrian along Port Henderson Road in Portmore, St. Catherine. She is yet to be identified. It is reported that, at about 5.20 a.m., a taxi operator was traveling along the roadway in the vicinity of the Blaze gas station when the woman reportedly suddenly ran from the median into the path of the vehicle. Despite attempts to avoid her, the woman was struck and collapsed on the roadway where she succumbed to her injuries. The police arrived at the scene and conducted a breathalyzer test on the driver, no signs of impairment were indicated, according to investigators. Anyone with information about the incident or the identity of the woman is being asked to come forward. Several rounds of ammunition and illegal guns seized in Denham Town, man arrested. A man has been arrested for his alleged connection to several rounds of ammunition and a gun found in Denham Town, Kingston, on Wednesday. The police report that during an operation in the Chestnut Lane area at about 6 p.m., 1.45 Taurus pistol with 6.45 rounds of ammunition, along with an additional 17 9mm rounds were seized. The identity of the man has been withheld as the investigation continues. Teen girl among two arrested after cops find gun in house. A man and a teen girl have been charged with multiple offences following an incident on Flinch Crescent, Kingston 11 on Sunday, September 1. Charge our 21-year-old Tariq Sutherland and 18-year-old Amoy Robinson, both of Flinch Crescent, Kingston 11. Reports from the Hounds Bay Police are that, at about 2.30 p.m., lawmen were on mobile patrol in the area and observed two people standing along Flinch Crescent. Upon seeing the police, both persons went into a premises and the police gave chase. A search was conducted and the gun was found inside the house. They were both charged on Tuesday, September 3, with possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. Their court date is being finalized. Bus had stopped with robbery and wounding charges. Detectives attached to the Clarendon Police Division have charged a 33-year-old man with robbery with aggravation and wounding with intent following an attack on a man during which he allegedly stole a smartphone and $7,000. Charges Camar Street, otherwise known as Bushead, a labor of Denver Crescent in Maypen. Reports indicate that on April 30, 2024, Street approached a man fetching water at a catchment in the community. Street allegedly pulled a knife from his waistband and demanded that the man hand over his valuables. When the man refused, Street reportedly kicked him several times, causing him to fall. He then allegedly took the cash on the smartphone, valued at $11,000 from the man's pocket, before leaving the scene. The incident was reported to the police, who launched an investigation. Street, who had already been detained for previous infractions, was placed on an identification parade. It was pointed out by the complainant and was subsequently charged. A court date for Street is being finalized. Man with a long rap sheet gets off bail. 
Senior Parish Judge Sanchia Burrell was left shell-shocked on Wednesday following the revelation that a man who allegedly swindled more than $12 million from several corporate entities is out on bail with no conditions attached. Albert Watkins, 55, is set of an extensive rap sheet. On Wednesday, the prosecutor said that he has several previous convictions. He is currently before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on an indictment with seven counts of obtaining credit by fraud, obtaining goods by means of forged documents, and conspiracy to defraud. The indictment also contains 14 counts of forgery. Boyle was not impressed when prosecutors indicated that Watkins was on $200,000 bail with no conditions attached and had other matters before the parish court. Who gave this man $200,000 bail? Or does it even make sense? She quizzed. So he had a love matter. And you, the investigator, gave him $200,000 bail? This is negligent, Burl argued. She then imposed conditions that required Watkins to report to the police three times weekly and surrender his travel documents. A stop order was imposed at the island sports. Allegations state that Watkins purported himself to be a businessman and visited various entities with the intention to credit goods. He is represented by attorney at law, Oswest Cena Smith. State-of-the-art facility to replace old shoes market in St. James. Mayor of Montego Bay, Richard Vernon, says the St. James Municipal Corporation has devised a plan to create a state-of-the-art market following another fire at the old shoes market. Fire got to the facility on Wednesday, less than a year after shops were destroyed in a blaze. Mayor Vernon is asking for patience with the process of establishing a new market. We presented the design that we wanted to realize in this space. Actually, now there are two designs and we need to select one and to finalize the funding and start the process. I will be meeting with the Urban Development Corporation later this week, and the, the team UDC, and also the Member of Parliament and the Deputy Prime Minister, so we can further the, the dialogue pertaining to this particular space in Montego Bay. Needs upgrading, it cannot continue as is. It is unregulated from electrical works to the occupancy of the shop to everything here. And we need to move swiftly. We, we have been trying. We have met with the persons here on several occasions. And we have had discussions to the effect that we agree on where we should go forward in terms of direction. PNP says it will not contest the hastily called sent and northeastern by election. The opposition People's National Party PNP has described as striking and unprecedented the decision by Prime Minister Andrew Holness to announce a by election in a constituency less than 24 hours after the resignation of the Member of Parliament. At a post cabinet media briefing Wednesday morning, Holness announced that electors in sent and northeastern will go to the polls on September 30 after nomination day next Wednesday, September 11. Holness also indicated that Senator Matthew Sumuda resigned from the Senate and the Cabinet on Monday and will be the party's candidate in the by-election. In a mid-afternoon release on Wednesday, PNP President Mark Golding noted the Prime Minister's announcements and questioned the timing. It is also of some importance to note that the first notification to the Jamaican people about the resignation of a Cabinet Minister and Senator Mr. Matthew Samuda is within the context of announcing a by-election, said Golding. The Prime Minister has clearly orchestrated the holding of this by-election, which is a slap in the face of the electors of Southern Trelawney, who have had no parliamentary representative for a full year, a quarter of the life of this House of Representatives. It is also a slap in the face of the people of Mount Bay, whose right to elect a councillor within 90 days of a vacancy was abridged by the Holiness Administration using an amendment to the Representation of the People Act, a by-election, which is legally due now, added Golding. He charged that the Holiness Administration, in the fifth and final year of its term of office, is becoming increasingly unpopular. Recent events show that it is on the ropes. The People's National Party is preparing for general elections to enable the people to vote in a new government and will not be contesting by-elections at this late stage in the run-up to the general elections, said Golding. It is significant the Parliament in 2016 legislated that there should be no by-elections for municipal corporations within a 12-month period leading up to local government elections. The party will contest the local government by-elections, which are due as required by law, as local government elections are not due for another three and a half years. The People's National Party remains steadfast in our mission to protect and strengthen Jamaica's democracy. We will not enter in a process that seeks to undermine the very principles we hold dearly. Instead, 
will focus on ensuring that every Jamaican has a voice and that every constituency is treated with the fairness and respect it deserves. The centre North East constituency became vacant on Tuesday when the sitting MP Marsha Smith resigned. Samud has been working in the seat for the JLP for more than a year and was recently elected the constituency chairman, so there was no surprise when it was announced that he would contest the seat. Meanwhile, Trelawney Southern has been without a representative in the House from last September when Marissa Dalrymple Philibert resigned following an Integrity Commission report which recommended that she be charged in relation to allegations of a false declaration to the Commission. On Wednesday, Holness did not say why a by-election was not announced for that seat, but he told the media briefing that by-elections will be held to fill all vacancies in months. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.